in a world of podcasts. One rises in the night to destroy them all. The Elder God in an ocean of noise. The Cthulhu of the airwaves. This is Spoiler Country. So we have an NHL team coming to Seattle. I'm excited. I, already, I, I, have, Putin, right? I have a hoodie already. Did you got a Kraken hoodie? I got a Kraken hoodie. Of course I've got a Kraken hoodie. Dude, did you uh, get season tickets? Fuck no, they were too expensive. But, but they were going. like 20 bucks at the beginning. Yeah, but they went up super. If you want them for 20 bucks, you better get in line and refresh that shit and be ready to go for hours because they oh, would that was, no 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 the 20 dollars was just to buy just to free, so that you had you were guaranteed the ability to buy yeah but they were gone almost instantly oh yeah yeah tickets and any tickets to any game right now is hundreds if not thousands of dollars yeah to any That's game unfortunate for a, a for a team that starts next year and it's like fuck i want to go to I a game this not- year they don't start this year next year they didn't start 2022 oh yeah. yeah i'm excited to go i've never been to a, a professional hockey game Oh, we, well, we kind of have to go to see Kraken, the Kraken. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, are, we are the Cthulhu of the airways. <laughs> right. I, I love the name. Right. I thought they a good name. Though right. I don't understand why they didn't do the Metropolitans. Why? Well, Kraken's better. It is, but the Metropolitans, they actually won the Stanley Cup, the Seattle Metropolitans. Oh, did they? Yeah. They're the you're first right. You're right. Their, their first game is, first game's in Everett on October 1st. In Everett? Yeah. Where are they playing? I don't know. It just says Angel of the Winds Arena Everett. Wait. Oh. <laughs> that's the, that's the casino. Well, that's because the key arena isn't ready yet. Right. So, okay. So, they're playing Everett on the first. On the second, they're playing the Showware Center in Kent. Oh, those, are all, okay, those are all preseasons. Okay. The first, their uh, first, okay. Their first actual game is in Vegas at T-Mobile Arena in Vegas. Nice. Let's see. Where are they playing? Oh. October 23rd is their first home game at the Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle. Yeah, I think it's the key arena. Well, yeah, you, you the call key arena. arena. They, they dug down and redid that whole thing. Good. Yeah. I maybe, don't know. maybe we get, this, maybe we get the, the Supersonics back. Fuck, dude. That one pisses me off. This is everybody off. Dude, I was a huge Sonic fan, dude. dude it's I got lucky enough to meet Gary Payton and be in his private booth. Nice. My buddy did all his electrical work at his house. <laughs> so his wife let us go and stay in his booth and he looks up he's pl- he's playing i think it's the either the mavericks or the nuggets and gary's got the ball you're right he's the point and he's he's walking down he's setting up and he looks up and there's me and my buddy chuck and brandon and our buddy mike with our beers and we're all <laughs> <laughs> and then two seconds later his wife shows up she goes oh i just wanted to make sure who it was <laughs> <laughs> gary saw us was like who the fuck are those white boys in my booth <laughs> <laughs> and then we're sitting there watching him play and it was awesome they won the game oh, but yeah. as we're watching this guy uh, came into the booth it was a, it was awesome, dude. It was a private booth. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting in this private booth, and this this black guy, these two black guys come in and they walk down. They're pretty good sized guys, dudes. And I'm just sitting there watching the game. I'm getting excited. I'm giving the the dude that sat next to me high fives. We're we're literally chest bumping each other, right? Right. Freaking cheering. And then and the guy's like, "All right, what's your name?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'm Kendrick." He goes, "Oh, I'm Master P." Had no idea who he was. Seriously, Master P is there? Dude, I chest bumped it, fist bumped it, was <laughs> freaking giving hugs and fucking fist bumping each other through three quarters of a Sonics game with Master P. That's Didn't hilarious. Even know who he was. I had no idea who he was. I, because it, at that time, that was like the late 90s. Yeah. I just, I wasn't a hip hop. I, I liked hip hop. I liked, right. I, I like any kind of music. If I yeah. like the beat, I'm good. But I don't know the players. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I had no idea who he was. And he he leaves. He's like, all right, player, we're out of here. And he gives me a thing and he and he, and he gives me like a, a like a bro hug, you know? Yeah, yeah. And he leaves. And my buddy Brandon was sitting right in the back of me. He goes, Do you know who that was? Like, yeah, that was that, that was Master P. He just introduced himself. He goes, Oh, that was Master P. And he was like, <laughs> Oh my God, that just happened. And nice. He freaked out. And I was like, I have no idea who you're talking about, but yes. <laughs> That's fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> It was crazy, dude. It was crazy. Oh, crazy dude, what, happened? what happened to me? I got a story for you from yesterday. Oh, what happened yesterday? So I'm out in the middle of nowhere. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm in this parking lot of like a warehouse and it's, I, I don't know if it's abandoned or what. There was like no other cars. You know what I mean? Right. 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 And it's, I'm almost to Fallon, Nevada and, and I'm sitting there and I'm, and I'm working because I have to be in a certain area so that I get a certain signal. Right. Right. And I'm sitting there and I have my car on, right? Right. So air conditioning. Cause it was, it wasn't hot, but it was, it was uncomfortable inside the car because the sun hit the thing. Anyways. Right. Right. Had all the windows up, door was locked, car was running, air conditioning on. I'm working. I'm going to say, I'm, 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 I'm doing this right on my laptop. I'm writing out a, a defect and I'm looking at this device and I'm like, okay. And I look up and there's this guy walking towards the car. Oh, geez. And I'm like, okay. I look down, I look up and he's boom. He's there <laughs> out the window. He knocks on the window, shows me a knife and says, I need you to get out of the car. What the fuck? Yeah. And I look at him and I'm like, no. And I just drove away. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it was, dude, it was the weirdest thing. The guy was like maybe a hundred pounds less than me, 120 pounds less than me. That's crazy. I was like carjacked. Yeah, dude. I don't know what he want. I don't know if he was. Yeah. He probably wanted to carjack me. Carjack you or like, uh, kill you. Jeez. <laughs> Who knows, man? But the car was locked. I don't know. He didn't, I don't think he tried to open it. You know what I mean? But he did knock on the window and show me a, a, a knife. It's crazy. And, dude. and I was like, he was like, I need you get out of the car. And I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> like, no. And I just drove away because it was like, I was literally just in park. I, and I didn't even think, right? I just drove, like all of a sudden I'm driving and I'm looking in my rearview mirror and he's walking away and I call the cops. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, this just happened. <laughs> and they're like, okay, we'll have... Um, well, where are you at? And I'm like, well, I left the area, obviously. Right. You know, and I was like in a Walmart parking lot. And I was like, well, I'm at the Walmart in Fallon. And they're like, okay, um, we'll send somebody there. I was yeah. like, all right. Two hours goes by, dude. Oh, Jesus. And I'm like, I call him back. I'm like, hey, it's like two hours ago. I said, I got work. I got all the stuff to do. Do you guys really need to talk to me face to face? You know? Right. Like, well, what's the description? You have a description. And I was like, yeah, he was like, I don't know, he was like five, eight, five, seven, somewhere around there, maybe 130 pounds, maybe. Yeah. Look like he, I was like, look, I grew up in a small town in, in, in Washington where meth was a big problem, especially in the 90s. Yep. And he looked like he was on something similar to meth. He had sores all over his face. He had, you know what I mean? Yeah. And okay, where was he? And I was like, he it was this area and they're like okay well if we need you to come in will you will you come in i'm like of course yeah I'll come. let me leave let me go home or you can send you can shoot me a video or a picture you could text me a picture if you want yeah you know whatever so i haven't heard anything since but i've never had anybody that's crazy i've been in fights i've been where somebody wanted to fight right yeah yeah and i've always been just big enough that people always thought twice like same same like do they want to really do this or do yeah. they you know what i mean like they, they could probably kick my ass but they know it's not going to be they know it's, they're, they're going to hurt too probably <laughs> yeah so but so if so <clears throat> most of the time it never nothing ever comes of it yeah which i'm glad for no, yeah, me too but i've never had somebody like flash a knife at me like that <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm sure i told before on the show on the show but do I? Do you remember the story? Or I've ever told you a story about the time I had a gun pulled on me. Was that when you were a security guard at the bowling alley? No, no. Well, there was that time too. But when I was a kid, when I was like fourteen or fifteen. No. So I was trick or treating. I was probably yeah, too old. To, so it was Halloween. I was probably too old to be trick or treating. But I was. I was going with like my my cousin and my. I'm sorry, my my nephew and I, kids. You know, I think I was like fourteen or that, that was age range. Last time you trick or treated. I think so. The last time I dressed up for trick for myself. Right. Because I took I would take JT out and stuff in that, in that time frame. But I was I was dressed as a serial killer, right? I had my hair all ratted up and I had a box of Cheerios with an accident. I thought I was hilarious. So I was a serial killer, you know. Yeah. <laughs> a serial oh, a serial okay. killer. Yeah, yeah. Walking pun. Got it. Exactly. It's a pun. It's very punny. Yeah. And my my uh I was with my nephew, Jeremy, who was the same age as me, and a couple of their friends, and we we're walking around their neighborhood. 
and we've been trick or treating for like an hour or so. We got candy, and we're getting ready to go back and to his house and like start eating candy. And this group of like ten older boys walks up to us, and they're probably, I would say, like a year to three years older than us at the time. So like like fifteen to eighteen, somewhere in that range, right? Jesus, these and, are the worst, right? And they walk up, and uh, they're like, you know, the whole stereotypical give me your candy type bull bullshit people do. And they're looking at it, they're like, give us your candy. And I was like, no, we're not giving you our fucking candy. One, I'm bigger than every one of you motherfuckers. Yeah. And I didn't say that, but I'm thinking this, you know. I'm like, no, I'm not giving you my candy. And then this one fucking kid with glasses pulls out a fucking revolver and goes, yeah, I think you're going to give me your candy, dude. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> and so I look around quickly. My nephew fucking bolts it and run back to his house. <laughs> yeah, All the other kids... All the other kids fucking scatter behind me, and I'm fucking left with these ten dudes around me, and one of them's got a fucking gun at me, and yeah. I'm like, "Fuck, fuck, fuck." You know I who look, they were. So that's the thing. I didn't know. I didn't recognize most of them, but I looked over, and one of them, I'm like, "Huh, that's my neighbor." So I just looked wow. at him, and I went, "Hey, Ruben, how's your dad doing?" Because he knew for a fact that if his dad found out he was out with the kid with the gun, he would beat his ass. Yeah, his I, dad was his dad was a was a, was a was a drunk, was a meth head, and would fucking beat their ass if they got in trouble. Right. Yeah, I don't agree with that, but I use that to my advantage this night. Totally. And I was like, "Hey, Ruben, how's your dad doing?" He was like, and he goes, he immediately goes, "Oh, oh, oh, Johnny, yeah, hey, hey, guys, we should, we, we we're good, we're good, we're good." And they left, <laughs> only because, and I like, I only got away with that because I, I knew him and his dad. I knew that if, I, if they didn't fucking kill me for whatever yeah. reason, he was in his ass fucking beat that night, the next night. Yeah. So yeah. it was like that that's what saved my ass, but it was fucking scary. I was like sweating bullets. Like I was, you know, 14 years old. The guy with the pistol pointed at me. I'm like over over fucking Halloween candy. Yeah, it's, it's fucking so that's the thing, dude. Bremerton is like a weird town. Most of the time, if you grow up in Bremerton, you're gonna get you're, you're the most is gonna happen is a fist fight. You most every yeah. once in a while you get some idiot with a gun. And the thing is, is they're just dumb enough to want to prove themselves. Right. They're just dumb enough to want to pull it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's scary, man. I mean, that's that's an it's a dick move, you know. Was well, over candy for Halloween candy? Yeah, for candy, dude. It's, come yeah. on. Yeah, Ugh. I just I don't get it, dude. Yeah, I yeah. don't get it. People are I weird. I also had a gun pulled me as a security guard pulled on me. It was kind of funny because the guy dropped it. <laughs> dude, I, I tell you what, dude. I quit a job. I was going to school, a trade school in Arizona back in 1993. Yeah. And I got a job at the Circle K. Yeah. So every time I go I to work, 11. Second, something strange is afoot at the Circle K. <laughs> and I was only 18. Yeah. And, uh, two weird things happened. The first, second, yeah, the second night I worked there, after I think it's six o'clock, we were required by law to lock up all the alcohol. So you had to go in, in, in you know, the big freezers or big refrigerators like we have today. You go right. in and you grab your soda, but those things lock from the top and bottom. Yeah. The ones that we had it. Anyways, this dude comes in. He's Mexican. And I'm only telling you that so you get the whole picture yeah, of yeah. what I was experiencing. He comes walking in and he's huge, dude. Big dude. Never seen. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a man in my life that big. Oh, just <laughs> pure muscle, just all muscle, right? You know, yeah. so big, like he probably would have to have a straw to drink his soda because his chest would get in the way. To actually, oh, <laughs> yeah, he was huge. Should, and he I mean, we, should, we shouldn't do this motion on camera. Just, just <laughs> <laughs> he had a bald head and he, yeah. and he had tattoos all over his head. And this is the early '90s, and people didn't do that, you know? right? It was just time. Yeah. Every yeah. once in a great while, you'd see it on TV, like a wrestler would have, yeah, a spiderweb tattoo. tattoo. Yeah, tattoos on his head. Oh, you see in a movie, but not in real life. Yeah. And so he had, he has whole all prison tats, you know. And he was tatted all up. Scary. He was a scary looking dude. Oh, that's scary shit, man. And uh, he goes, Hey, I'm like, oh hey. Because it was like seven. Yeah. It's like broad daylight still. Yeah. He's like, uh, you guys, where's your beer at? I'm like, oh, it's in the back corner. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, you need me to unlock the thing? And he's like, no, I'm just looking. And he goes back there and he just puts his foot right through the glass, the pane glass. Oh, he shit. grabs two cases of beer and then walks out. He's like, he's like, I'll see you later. I was like, later, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't get paid enough for this shit. <laughs> yeah. I waited like 10 minutes and then I called the police. I'm like, yeah. hey, we just got robbed. And this is what <laughs> happened. And we had on, I should have took that videotape because it oh, was man. 
<laughs> it was crazy, dude. It was like, what the fuck? And then a week later, the guy that got me the job, we went to school together. I can't remember his name now, but he got robbed at gunpoint. Oh, geez. Because this Circle K was off of 40, what is it? 45th and Indian school. And right behind it was a big ghetto neighborhood. Yeah. And it wasn't like the most pleasant. It wasn't the most, I don't know what it's like today. This is, you know, 25 years ago. Almost, yeah. Almost 30 years ago. Yeah. I don't know what it's like today, but then it just wasn't a very safe. I got tons of stories. Of yeah. The whole area, dude. Cause we just lived in a bad part and he got robbed. And the next day he quit and he, and it messed him up so bad. Yeah. He didn't get like, they stuck a gun in his face. That's scary. He, he shit his pants, like literally shit his pants. Yeah. And then they took, they got like $20, right? Because the safe is timed. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> time in the safe and you got, anyways, so you got like 20 bucks and he, he left school. Oh, like geez. he wouldn't go back to work the next day or, you know, they were like, take the week off. And, and he just, he never came back to work. And then he left school because it just really, really affected him. Yeah, it's just came from a small town, like like literally like a hundred people in the town, right? Where everybody knew each other. Yeah. And my manager goes, Hey, good news. <laughs> literally how he said it. Hey, good <laughs> news. I'm gonna call him Chris because I can't remember his name. Chris quit. So uh, we're gonna promote you up to the graveyard shift. Like that's an extra 50 cents an hour. <laughs> and I was like, I have school. Like, no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, Well, why don't you try it? No, no, no. And I was like, oh my God. And he and I had at that age, I had a hard time saying no, like sticking yeah. up for myself. Right, right. Most so I was like, uh, okay. And then I, I was there for like two weeks and they had a guy that worked with me. Yeah. Right. And he was super cool. I can't remember. He was African. And like from Africa. Yeah. Nice. And he, he had that, that great accent and we would sit there and talk. And then I'd go to his apartment after, after work and we'd have drinks together and, and just bullshit. He was a really cool guy. And he was like, 20 years older than me and it just you know we just had a fun time i introduced him to kiwis he'd never had a kiwi before oh nice <laughs> and i bought kiwis and i brought him in and he was like oh my god anyways he went on vacation and i had to do like a week and a half by myself great yeah. and i was just like sitting there and i had this guy come in and was begging for food and he didn't have any money and, and oh, i was like yeah he's okay. like can i just get some hot dogs you know and i was like yeah dude take some hot dogs you know <laughs> And then, um, yeah, and I don't know, dude, it was just weird. And, and I was yeah. like, I did it like a week and a half and I'm like, I can't do this. Yeah. It's not fun. And, yeah. And I tried to tell my manager, I'm, I can't, I got a school. I'm tired. I'm not doing well in school because of this. I don't need this job. I just wanted it for spending money. Right. 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 Because I'm, I, I was privileged. I got lucky. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was born lucky. Sorry. Lucky for you. Yeah. And I was just like, I gotta, I, I just can't do this. And I left and then I didn't, but I, I did it really poorly because yeah. I tried quitting, you know, but then I walked into my manager's office and he gives me this bag full of fruits and vegetables from his garden, tells me how to cook the oh. stuff. And, you know, like, and yeah. then and I left and then I got home and I just never went back. Yeah. There you go. And then I called to get my check and they were like, you have to go get it there. And of course the lady that I used to give a ride home to every night, was all pissed and handed me my check, but she wouldn't say anything. She just got my check, gave it to me and walked away. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then dude, one night I got off work and I lived on uh, 51st Ave and Thomas. And I don't know if you know Phoenix at all. I don't, but it's a planned, it's a planned city. So yeah. it's literally a grid. Yeah. Right? Like I think named streets run east to west and like first street up to main street or like streets up to main go east to west or north to south and then after that is avenues it's super easy to get around right, right? As, as it should be in a city yeah and they have all indian schools and main road drag and camelback and they have thomas that cuts diagonally across the whole city and that's it mm -hmm. really easy to get around and i lived on 51st avenue in thomas and it was not a good area they found a lady's head in the uh oh, in, shit. The, in our dumpster and then two weeks later they found her body floating in the uh, the, the causeway the riverway things the water you know the yeah the man-made rivers to the city right well i'm driving home one night after work and it's like three o'clock in the morning four o'clock in the morning and i'm going down 51st avenue i go down indian school take a left on the 51st avenue i'm going down 
And like somewhere, I can't remember where, but somewhere between Indian school and Thomas is a big neighborhood and it had a huge like entryway to it. Yeah. In the middle of the entryway, laying in the street is a guy with a knife sticking out of his chest. Oh, shit. I'm 18 driving in my little Toyota pickup doing this. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And I was like, and my first instinct is like, do I get out and check on him? Right. Do I help this guy? And then I was thinking, that's a ghetto. And I don't know if it's safe for anybody to get out and, and check for that, check on that guy right now. You get out and check, you might be the next I don't one. know when it happened. It could yeah. have just happened. Those people could still be just right there. Yeah. And then you're and then all of a sudden I'm I'm like contemplating. And it, dude, it's it's literally when you're looking. And you start thinking in your mind, you don't know if it's a life or death situation. Right. Right. And you're thinking to yourself, you're looking at it happening, or you're looking at it, and it's brain, it's burned into my mind. This guy sprawled out with a knife sticking out of his chest. Oh, you'll never look, forget that. Yeah. It's like it looked like a Rambo knife. You know? Yeah. And I'm sitting there looking and and, and I come to a stop. And I'm, and I'm seriously contemplating, do I get out? Do I, do, do I, do I just get to the nearest payphone call 911? Right. What do right. I do? You know, I didn't, I didn't, dude, I didn't know what to do. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm going to go to the payphone. I'm going to go to the payphone. I'm going to go to yeah. the payphone. And then all of a sudden behind me, cop light, cop cars, ambulance, all, like the full force of the Phoenix <laughs> PD is coming <laughs> behind me. And I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time I got like 20 feet, they were already there. Nice. Yeah. And I was just like, and I went home. I went home because I didn't know what else to do. Home, you know I mean? cried in the shower. Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> that would have been funny, but no. But I didn't. I, you know, there's a part of me that goes, I should have talked to the police, but I don't know what I, I wouldn't have been able to. I didn't see anything. I just happened to get off work and driving by. And I might, it might have just happened like minutes before. Yeah, I mean, talking to the police at that point, you, really, you, had nothing, you, had, you had nothing to give them besides, oh, I saw this. You know, you're not yeah, yeah, I saw the guy laying there. Yeah. I saw a, uh, a decapitated head there, too. Oh, that's harsh. Oh, dude, we were in school. We we're doing our orientation. It was UTI for air conditioning. UTI? A urinary tract, a urinary tract infection? Yeah. You, you, they should have thought about that, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyways, it was an air conditioning school and an automotive school. Nice. And so they would do this huge, he'd show up that day and they would do this huge orientation. And yeah. then they would talk about your financial aid. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't pay back your financial aid, that they showed a guy literally going to jail for not paying his student. Oh my loan. God. One of those. And this guy behind me, John Boutique, man, he was a funny guy. He was like in his forties. Right. And he's like, there's no such thing as debtors jail. Why are you showing these kids this? <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. But anyways, I, think when I, I, I hate schools like that, but yeah, go ahead. First day of, of school, we're um, doing this huge orientation. We get out, and this kid, these two kids in, in the automotive side, one had a like a 1971 Camaro. Nice. And the other guy had like a 1976 or 70, 1970-something uh, Volkswagen Bug. Yeah. But it was souped up. So they decided UTI at that time was off of, it was Universal Technical Institute. Mm -hmm. They were off of Indian school. And they decided, these two guys decided they were talking to each other and they decided they wanted to race. So they get out of the parking lot and I'm like, I, I'm still parked, right? But I see them leave, okay? My buddy, Eric, who was a friend who uh, was doing air conditioning. And uh, we had just met that day, but we ended up being really good friends and, and hanging out all the time. He was in the car behind them. Okay. Yeah. Eric had long hair. Right. 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 They come out of the Indian, they come out, take a left on the Indian school and they just start, they're getting side by side and they're going, mm -hmm. well, this 30 year old guy and his elderly father decided to, to, cross Indian school, not at a crosswalk. They decided to jaywalk. Yeah. At the, at the, at the worst time. And the the bug hit that old man and he exploded. He exploded? 
Yeah, he full on exploded. Eric was in the car behind them. Everybody in the car, they had their, their windows down, got doused oh, in blood. My God. Yeah. Eric's oh. he he went home. He had so much blood in his hair, he couldn't wash it out fast enough. He shaved his head. Mind you, he'd been he'd been oh, his hair went almost to the middle of his back. He was holy. Holy crap, dude. Yeah. It was that's traumatizing. That's lifelong trauma right there. Yeah. I went around the corner. We come around the corner. We're out like maybe three or maybe five minutes later. The right. cops are already there. The ambulance is already there. Right. The old man's dead. Dude, his head is on the ground and we drive right by it as they're covering it up. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Dude, it was nuts. I've never then, seen like yeah. that. I see I see somebody get hit and die before, but never like explode like that. That's I didn't see the I didn't see the accident. I just saw the aftermath. Oh, well, Eric saw all of it. Yeah. And then um the next uh day so that so the next day the guy that owned the Volkswagen bug went home to Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But he had to be investigated because someone died. One, they were jaywalking. Yeah. And two the guy driving the bug never slowed down. He he didn't slam on his brakes. He just slowly slowed down. So they ah. couldn't tell how fast he was going. Oh, geez. Yeah. And so he didn't, nothing happened. He didn't, I, I mean, I know it was bad that he was racing. I get that. Yeah. But it's such a calamity of errors on, on everybody's part. I don't know what you do. It's just bad all around, man. Dude, it's nuts. It's nuts. That was my time in Phoenix. And I was like, I got to yeah. go. I was like, one, I started doing all this air conditioning stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to crawl underneath people's houses. I I'm just, done. I don't want to do that. What am I doing? Yeah, I'm out of here. We're going to do computer stuff instead. Pays better. Yeah. Actually, HVAC, <laughs> HVAC pays really well right now. Like, if you get an HVAC, it pays really well. Yeah. Dude, it paid well then. If yeah. you got a, dude, in the, in the 90s, in the mid 90s, if you got a job in Vegas at a hotel maintaining oh, yeah. HVAC, it was 100 grand a year. Yeah. And that's a lot. That's a lot of money in the 90s. Yeah. And if you started your own company, and I already had a job in Seattle, I talked to these, these people that own their own company, and they were going to hire me as soon as I was done with school. Yeah, you know, I just awesome. was like, I don't want to crawl underneath houses. I don't want to deal with that shit. You know, I just, I don't. <laughs> well, it's not any fun. No, no. And my sister and my brother had just graduated, gotten their associates, and work on their bachelors, and I already had a job at a place called famous that did medical billing they, yeah. they worked on their software yeah and uh, yeah so i was like i'm doing the wrong thing yeah if you made a hundred thousand dollars 1990 1993 that'd be like making almost two hundred thousand dollars now yeah it's a lot of money yeah it's a lot of money but you had to get a job you had to you had to get you had to things there's a couple things you either get a job in vegas at the hotels or disney on ice that was oh, it. yeah yeah you know and i was like man I was like, oh, that'd be cool. And I was thinking about it in school. And I was like, okay, well, I have to do something after high school. They're like, yeah. never mind. I want to be a podcaster. I don't know what yeah. that means yet, but in yeah. years, I'll figure that out. <laughs> Here we okay. are. We can have it. <laughs> yeah. That was, that's some nutty. I don't think those are stories I've never told you before. No, you, I that, that exploding dude was the first time I've heard that one. <laughs> yeah, that was insane, nice. man. It's insane. insane. It's like, why are you, dude? Indian school is a four lane road with a, with the turn, with a turn lane in the middle. So it's like five lanes long. That's crazy. Why would you begin to, and this guy was like in his eighties, dude, oh. he was old and his son was walking him across the, the thing. And I was like, why wouldn't you go down to a crosswalk? Yeah. Do a crosswalk. Yeah. It was weird. The whole thing was weird. And that's a wonderful, happy note to end the episode on exploding, yeah. exploding old men. Yeah. Not it's to make light of somebody's mm -hmm. death, but uh, if you get the. Well, it was almost thirty years ago, dude. Yeah. At one point, when is it okay to joke? I mean, if he was in his eighties, then he would probably be be dead now, anyways. Yeah, yeah, definitely. One hundred and three, yeah. one hundred and ten. No, but our condolences. Yeah, he'd be one hundred and ten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> all right, that, it's it's super sad though. I mean, jokes aside, it's it's super sad. It is. It is. It was weird, dude. It was. It was. It was. It's, that kind of stuff stays with you when you see yeah. that stuff, you know. And it's just well, like oh. our next topic. We'll, we'll tell more horror stories. I got I got some I can tell you about jobs I've worked. Not quite exploding people, but some pretty some pretty interesting stuff. Before we go, because I don't have anything more after this. <laughs> 
So Tafine has a friend. Her name's John L. Yeah. Her mom's whole, John L's mom's whole job is to drive around Boeing. And because Boeing is so massive, people, you don't understand how big these complexes are. Boeing City. Yeah. She, her whole job is to drive around and look for dead people. Holy shit, really? People, yeah, that people that, because people die of a heart attack or an aneurysm or a stroke all the time because they're out in the middle of nowhere. They're out in the middle of someplace. The they field. can't get any help and then just die right there. And then they're there for days. That's a horrible job. Yeah. That's a oh, job where you, more, that's a job one, where you pray every day you don't fight. You just, your job is just driving. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> this boy country. I'm Johnny Horst. That's Kendrick that's, that's, Regan over that's, there. That, that way. Oh, you're going to be that, that way. Yeah, I'm over here. Yes. Yeah. Because we never did, we never did an intro. We just started talking, so I'll do, we'll do the intro at the end. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey guys, welcome back to Spoiler Country. Uh, I'm Ken Green, and that's Mr. Horsley and um, Chris We're out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, until next time. Until next time. Spoiler Country. And we're back. That's right. We are back. Back in the saddle again. Well, <laughs> I hope you guys really, really enjoyed that as much as we did making it for you. And if you like what you heard and you want to hear more, you got to go check out SpoilerVerse.com because at SpoilerVerse.com, we have a plethora, amazing directors and artists of all walks of life and editors and writers. And oh my God, are you a lover of comic books like we are? And then. So There's many. so many amazing people from the comic book world over at SpoilerVerse.com. And I highly implore you to go there and check it out. Yeah, and while you're there, you can check out all the other podcasts on our network, like Fridges and Geekdoms and Funny Book Forensics and Haphazard Adventures and Nerds from the Crypt and so many more. Misery Point Radio. episodes all the time. Go check all of them out. And check out all of the reviews and previews and articles we have going up every single day for you. Every day on SpoilerVerse.com for you to check out and to read and to love and to like and to comment. We have a store link. You want to help support the site? You can do it two ways. One, go to our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash spoiler country. Or go to our store link in the middle of the site there and get a t-shirt, a face mask, a hoodie, something. Look fly as hell and help support the site when you do that because we get a dollar or two. And, you know, maybe you want to talk to us. If you do, you can do it obviously on all the socials. But if you go to scpod.us slash discord, you can join our public discord server and come chat with us all day long. I couldn't say it better myself, dude. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. You just mouthed out a ton of information at once and really <laughs> i hope you guys enjoy what you're hearing because we're we're working our butts off to bring it to you we are we are i guess there's only one left thing one left thing yeah <laughs> i'm gonna go with it there's only one left thing left to do what's that in an oceans of podcasts we are cthulhu as cthulhu compels you to Bacardi. open the mind and read more Okay.